Good evening once again. Now, this is a point in the interview or in the course of the news bulletin where we have an interview with a personality that's fascinating, a personality that's got a great story behind them and something that we believe would be of interest and of benefit to you, our viewer. Tonight, we have a lady who has a history of firsts and a history of breaking history. This is Beatrice van der Velde. She is right here with us. She is going to explain to you the origins of her exotic sounding name. And I can assure you she is uh, homegrown but exported to the country of Germany. She will tell us all about herself. Welcome. Busana. You're very well decorated, you're well known out there, but this is a chance for us to introduce you to your own people once again. So in a few words, why don't you tell us who you are and where you came from originally? Well, as you heard, my name is Vicky uh, Sander mm -hmm. and I'm originally, of course, from Kenya, mm -hmm. and my hometown is Angela. Oh, brilliant. And uh, that is where I was born. Mm -hmm. Born and bred, mm -hmm. but my forefathers came from Kiabu. Mm -hmm. My mother is from a place called Kabuko, mm -hmm. near Limuru, and my father is from Malawi. So hang on a second. Let me see if I get this uh, trajectory correctly. Born and bred in Eldoret, yes. but originally from somewhere else. So you are an export from Moranga yes. to Eldoret. Yes. Then you were exported, or you exported yourself from Eldoret to the international community. Yes, I Quite a story, and I guess there is more. Tell me about, and tell us by extension Kenyans, tell us about um, what happened to you or what you did when you were 18 years old in Eldoret. Well, first of all, before I even tell my story, right. I would like to tell you that my origin is actually very decorated. Mm -hmm. uh, my father is actually a son of a chief called mm -hmm. Karori Walakure. Mm -hmm. That is actually one of the very first paramount chiefs in Kenya. Actually, I'm informed by my producer that we would like to capture that afresh. And so, uh, kindly allow us to take a step back, start from the beginning, right? Good people of Kenya, take your notebooks. This is a story that you don't want to miss. She's only going to say it once again, and you better be watching, and you better be taking note. SMS lines are open. Beatrice van der Velde. I hope I'm saying it correctly. 22162. Ask her any questions that you would like her to tell you. She's a woman well known, well versed in matters business. She's a leader in, in the world of business, both in Kenya and internationally. She's highly decorated, highly, highly connected, and highly, highly impactful. This is a woman who has represented Kenya abroad to great success. And she's right here, and uh, right now she's uh, donning camera number four. And she's ready to go. Good people of Kenya, are we good? Are we ready? And here we go. Beatrice, the origins, the paramount chief, go. So my father actually is one of the sons of the paramount chief, the very first chief, uh, chiefs uh, during our, you know, you know, before we actually got our independence. And what is his name? His, his name is uh, Karori Wagakure. Mm -hmm. So actually my first born brother is called Karori as well. Mm -hmm. He lives in Eldoret. I'm sure a number of people who live in Eldoret know him. Mm -hmm. He's a very successful businessman there. He exports leather to China and uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. And he has also tried to get into politics. He tried to actually contest uh, in 1992 uh, on an opposition ticket, but uh, unfortunately he didn't make it. Just a second, is he your older brother? He's my first born brother, called after the, 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 the chief, the chief Karori. himself. Yes. This line of leadership from the chief and this uh, uh, tendency to want to step up to the public and, and offer leadership that your brother took, that bug bit you as well. Right? Yes, it did. And you exercised it. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. So actually, when my brother did try to get into politics and uh, vied on a DP ticket, he lost. That's in 1992. That is in 1992. And uh, parallel, I also did vie, but in, on a Ford Asili ticket. Mm -hmm. You all know that uh, that time in Eldoret, it was very difficult uh, to actually bring opposition into being. Mm -hmm. 
because that was actually when the multi-party system was born. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, actually, according to the Kalenjin taboo, uh, a woman is actually then was supposed to be in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And here I was, coming from central classrooms. province, born and bred in Eldoret, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I come to, you know, to disagree with the ruling party, which was Kanu. Mm -hmm. So it was a very difficult fight for me. Mm -hmm. But even when I was a child, every school I went, I was a prefect. Uh, all the teachers uh, actually did notice that I had a talent. So right from my primary school, which was Catholic all along, mm -hmm. I was a prefect. I went to a primary school, which was actually called St. Mary's Primary School. For those people who live in Eldoret, they know it. Mm -hmm. Then further on, I went to uh, El Immaculate Heart Junior, where I wanted to become a nun, mm -hmm. because that school only trains girls who want to become nuns. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, I just decided to take a different direction. Now, let me ask you this. From, th there's, from your story, I take it there was a heavy influence of, or, you know, of, of leadership in your family, coming yes. from your family. Yes. And then there's this other religious influence. Yes. What other influences kind of made the cocktail that pushed you into public life? Because you started quite early, and you went out and you never stopped going. Well, when my parents did come to Eldoret, that was in the in the six in the sixties. Mm -hmm. That time, it was just my firstborn brother and my secondborn brother, who is a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, we were living from hand to mouth, that is what I hear. But as we grew up, because my father was pretty old, my mother happens to be the second wife of uh, Mwangi Karori, mm -hmm. who actually died about six years ago. And at the age of 96, mm -hmm. that is when he... 98, sorry, that is when he passed on. And he actually was the area chief, the area Mzee Wabita, mm -hmm. uh, until his death. So that is actually a lineage of leadership. Mm -hmm. So we did live from hand to mouth. My parents were pretty uh, poor mm -hmm. because my father was very old. So my mother was the breadwinner. She's actually now at, uh, at the age of 86. Mm -hmm. And if I can take you back now to the history of my mother, mm -hmm. my mother originates from, actually the father is a brother to another chief called Chief Koinange. Mm -hmm. The famous The Chief, chief Koinange. Koinange is actually my mother's uncle. So again, you come from a stock of leadership. Oh, yes. Tell me about this moment when, as a young woman, first of all, you're breaking tradition. There were no women in the uh, political scene at that time, perhaps maybe Chalagat Mutai at the time and, and a few others, you got the courage to step up to a male-dominated field and on the so-called wrong party. And at the very first time that multi-party democracy uh, or politics was happening in the country, what was that like? Well, first of all, I would go back to my history in terms of my school, etc., because I was... Well, and this is something that most of the parents actually need to learn, that sometimes those people who have this talent of leadership are termed as black sheep of the family mm -hmm. because every time I was being beaten, I was by teachers, I was being sent back home. And the only person who supported me then was my late father. Mm -hmm. He did realize that I, was, I had a talent, and this is where most of the parents go, long, go wrong in this country because some children despite the fact that you're from a big family, mm -hmm. there is that leadership in someone. And I, I didn't realize this myself as well because I always tended to fight for the rights of other, we, of other students. Mm -hmm. So my Form 6 class, I did it in two schools. So I was expelled in the first one. Then I went to the next one. I was expelled and I, because I was the last lot of Form 6 leavers. Mm -hmm. So I was just allowed to do my exam. So this leadership has always been boiling in my heart. Mm -hmm. But the, the reason why I got actually into politics was I had also realized that leadership in this country was only for the elite, for the elite, mm -hmm. for those with money. And those of us who lived in poverty were kind of forgotten. Mm -hmm. So I was prompted to, you know, talking to my villagers around the area. For those who come from Eldoret, Old Uganda Road, and Kapsuswa is one of the slums then we had in Eldoret. And I, when I realized that my mother had actually hit the wall, she was very poor and she could not penetrate the wall anymore, despite the fact that she was living from hand to mouth, plowing land and getting us to school. I, I then thought, she cannot get any further, so I had to take up the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would, first of all, try this by, you know, getting into politics and let the, 
the, let the voices of those who are not up there be heard. Mm -hmm. So I thought, where, because my mother said, you've reached your form six level, we, have, we cannot uh, take you to any further colleges. I got a place in, the, in America, I couldn't even pay my, 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 t my ticket to the US. Mm -hmm. Then I, had, I went thinking, then multi-party came into being. Mm -hmm. And multi-party for me meant, mm -hmm. This is a party that actually will accommodate even those who are voiceless, mm -hmm. whose voices are not heard. So I decided to, you know, to, to try and get into politics and see whether I will succeed in actually being elected. And what happened? And so I went from one door, you know, doorstep, from one door to another, talking to people, telling them, you know, we've been locked behind. We, we live a very poor life. We, you know, the wearer of the, ship, the shoe actually knows where, knows the, where the most, is. yes. And did your message cut across to them? Oh, yes. And so I went from one door to another talking to my biggest voters who are actually very, very poor community because that area is actually, then has a lot of poor people. Mm -hmm. So there was this multi-party system. And you remember those days in 1992, multi-party we had uh, several parties against one, which was quite Kanu, number, and in a, in a Kanu-dominated town, yeah. area rather. Mm -hmm. So it was even more difficult for me, mm -hmm. being a woman, to penetrate into, you know, into politics. But you did. Oh, yes, I did, because um, the message which I was selling was, was able to be bought, because I told people that I will be the mouth mm -hmm. of the women who have been left in the kitchen to cook, those children who cannot be able to get further into their education. We needed someone who actually felt our pain to speak for us, and they Somebody decided to give me a chance. That pain. Yes. Now, tell me this. Um, what was your experience in leadership at that time? You were well, gotten elected? Well, at that time, the, the biggest problem then was when, you know, multi-party came into being, uh, we had a lot of other parties opposing each other, mm. as usual. Mm. So there was this party, Kanu, and we had a lot of other uh, opposition parties. We had Ford Kenya, we had DP, we had Ford Asili, name them. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we all went to the field and got nominated from each party. For instance, Ford Asili did have a couple of... Uh, a couple of other, uh, other people who wanted to, you know, the same. So we were almost eight in Foda Sili. So we had to, you know, fight against each other politically. Mm -hmm. And then I emerged the winner. Mm -hmm. And every other party, Kanu, Ford Kenya, DP, had the same procedure. Mm -hmm. So we had to now meet mm -hmm. the leaders of each party. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I did beat all of them. And they were all men. So we had, I had almost seven opponents who were men. And you trounced them all, all of them, even Kanu. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I did beat all of them. And they were all men. So we had, I had almost seven opponents who were men. And you trounced them all, all of them, even Kanu, were the ones, the, the best out party. of, the best, the best out of their own party. And you, you hit them all. And I did hit them all. Now, uh, I would like to draw uh, from that well of experience um, from 1992. I want you to look at the country today and I want you to tell us whether you feel that the things that you fought for as a politician when you began your political career back then, do you feel that the things that you fought for um, are, are getting better? Do you feel like um, your people have been uplifted to a place that you would like them to be uplifted? Well, actually, we've gone pretty far, uh, but unfortunately, I had to leave the country in 1999 because I did actually try again in 1997, but this time around on a Kanu ticket, mm -hmm. because when uh, the president, and I would like to thank him, I, I hear he's unwell, President mm -hmm. Moy, when he heard about me and uh, the late B. Watt, mm -hmm. You know, they were kind of against me, but mm -hmm. after they realized that I was actually out to, you know, bring different tribes together, mm -hmm. they all kind of became fond of me. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1997, uh, President Moy actually proposed that I should actually buy on a Kanu ticket. And I did speak to my people. I thought, you know, that was the only part, because when I tried to get the mayorship, which I lost by one vote mm -hmm. in 1992, the only reason why I didn't get that was because I was in a different party and you know that is a Kanu zone and Kanu candidates were more than us because those elected are the ones who elected the mayor. So I did lose that position by a vote. So in 1997, the president and the, the president then Moy and uh, Honorable Biwot, they thought I was quite um, 
a candidate who can actually bring all these tribes together. So I did vie in 1997 on a canoe ticket, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. But due to some unavoidable reasons, I did lose by a very small margin. So I became totally broke, and that is when I decided to try my life elsewhere because I could hardly pay my rent. Right. So you needed a fresh start. I needed a fresh start. Um, at what point after that did you acquire your surname? And at what point did you now decide to um, extend your leadership to the world of business? Because um, the, the current Kenya right now recognizes you as a, a very strong leader in business especially for women and in uh, renewable energy and you know in in, in kinds of um, areas where they're not only trend setting but also kind of difficult for a lot of people to get into so when did you make the leap into business and um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your surname which is very interesting well before i get to that question you asked me earlier on what i think about the current uh, politics whether Actually, our having been the pioneers of democracy, whether it's leading us to the right direction, I would say yes, because mm -hmm. we've really gone a long way. Mm -hmm. If most of you can remember uh, in uh, mm -hmm. Wasingishu district, that was where now really uh, opposition was kind of looked as an odd number. Mm -hmm. But we've really grown politically. Uh, in Eldoret, uh, prior to my election, uh, there were no women, apart mm -hmm. from the lady that you mentioned, mm -hmm. the Kalenjin. Mm -hmm. And today in Eldoret, we have, now we do have a, gov a, a governor woman, Quite. a Kalenjin amazing, from, amazing, a, Kalen from uh, a Kalenjin tribe. We actually have three governors, governor women. Mm -hmm. In Eldoret, we also have since I, I actually opened the way for women, mm -hmm. we have quite a number of women who've been elected. So, yes, I would say that we are heading for the right direction. Mm -hmm. The, the multi-party system that we brought actually has paved way for even the youth. Mm -hmm. We have seen a lot of, a number of youth being elected, mm -hmm. not just because, un, unlike then, the, uh, the days when Khan was actually the only party, it was about those who have the money that mm -hmm. were being elected. Mm -hmm. But now we, we have seen that the politics have taken a different change in a positive mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. It is about what you sell to the people that counts and right. not your background, your social background, neither does it actually count from what money you have. So it's about really what you can be able to deliver to the government. So really, right. I would say that it has positively changed. Right. There's a viewer here called Christopher who's asking, um, again, the, he's actually repeating the question I asked you, um, you know, and, and my director tells me we're, we're running out of time. So really briefly, um, how, what prompted me. your transition into business? So actually, when I did leave for, uh, for Germany, which was in 1999, mm -hmm. I still felt that uh, my work here, the five years that I was given, although in that five years I also went to America to get, you know, to get, to get uh, what the Americans did that made their, their country run uh, better than ours. So, and I thought that training was, ju was not just enough and it, wo it was not going to be in vain. So when I left for Germany, which was really, I would say, out of poverty, mm -hmm. because after now I vied for the second time I actually ran broke. And instead of walking around, you know, being kind of a beggar, I decided to take off to, to, to Germany. I did go there just as a guest and uh, never came back because mm -hmm. I thought that I didn't have a place here anymore because uh, all my doors were shattered. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I did come back and open a company in 2003, which is called uh, Mundoff Limited. Oh, right. Right. This company is approximately 16 years old. Right. So when I went to uh, Germany, I still had that vision mm -hmm. of my country. And I thought when I go there, I will try to link up both countries because our country still needs, our country needs uh, people to, you know, bring it up economically. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, going to, from one seminar to another, going to look for funders. So you never actually stopped this uh, leadership thing? No, was... no, 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 I didn't. And now uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the um, really uncomfortable position of having to, to, to kind of take a break because you have such a powerful story. And uh, this good people of Kenya, I think we will call this chapter one. You know, this is the introduction to Beatrice 
how do you say the last name? Beatrice van der Felde. Van der Felde. This is like the first chapter. She's got quite a lot more to share. And uh, um, she's, are you on social media? I'm on Facebook. You're on Facebook? Yes. How can people, the people who want to ask you questions right now, they're sending them to me. How can they get to you? What's your name on Facebook? Betty, Betty Mundoff, under my company. All Betty right. Mundoff is my company name. There you go. Betty Mundoff. And uh, Mundorf is M-U-N-D-O-R-F, correct? Yes. And that's how you can get in touch with her. This is just a first, um, um, you know, kind of glimpse into her life. And we may not be able to do it a lot of justice because our time is extremely limited. My director has been uh, urging me to um, keep giving her a little bit more time, but at the same time, watch the clock. And I'm afraid we are out of time. But I would like, before we go, I'd like to give her... Uh, in 10 words or less, I would like her to encourage you, the people out there, the woman uh, who's watching this, who has ambitions in business and politics. This is your camera, Beatrice, and would you please talk to people who are watching you right here. The camera that has a, a light at the end of it. Well, uh, first, of, first and foremost, I would like to thank the head of state because uh, three, two years ago, actually three years ago, when I did not really know my whereabouts in terms of bringing the investors here, I did approach him and I told him that the Germans have actually softened up and they are ready to come into the Kenyan market. So two years ago, he actually did listen to me and came to Germany. And he actually came with a lot of uh, ideas from Germany. And uh, last year, I was, I'm happy to have actually been among the people who actually prompted the Chamber of Commerce Berlin, which was actually led by Gerd Muller, to come to Kenya. So we did sign a lot of, uh, a lot of MOUs. And now Germans have actually are willing to come to Kenya. So for those women who are out there and who have been born from poverty and think that that is the end of their life, I would like to encourage you that it's about what you do, the focus that you have that will sell you. It's not about the money. It's not about who you know. It's about actually who you are and what your focus is. And for the women, for instance, who tend to think that uh, you cannot make it, even those abroad, because I'm very sure there are those people who are watching me abroad. There is a lot of uh, market in Kenya for you. So let's join hands, and I'm sure we will uh, actually make it together. Absolutely. And on that positive note, we take a short break, and Carol Jenga is coming up with business in a short while. Do stay tuned. <laughs>